The Law of the Sea Treaty Briefing. Will U.S. sovereignty be lost? Eagle Forum has always worked on the sovereignty issue. Um, it's been a, a part of our, our portfolio for a while. Um, and the Law of the Sea Treaty it really is, um, the, just takes the, takes the bullseye um, right there, puts it, puts it on national sovereignty. And you're probably, as you heard from Frank, and you're, you're probably going to hear from other speakers about the recent Supreme Court case um, of Jose Medellin. And you're probably going to hear about it several times. And it's important, and that's why you're hearing about it. Because if there's ever a chance where the opposing team gives us a playbook of how they're going to handle something, this is it. And it just happened just a block away last week. Um, the case uh, before the Supreme Court, it proves why the Senate must defeat the United Nations Law of the Sea Treaty. The oral arguments heard this month by the justices didn't mention the treaty per se, but the parallels are very powerful. The case concerns Jose Medellin, a Mexican rapist murderer who is now on death row in Texas. Medellin was convicted and sentenced to death after he confessed in 1993 to the savage rape and murder of two teenage girls in Houston. Long after Medellin had received full due process of American, in the American legal system, in 2003, the Mexican government sued the United States in the International Court of Justice, also known as the World Court. That is an agency of the UN which sits at The Hague in the Netherlands. In 2004, the World Court ruled 14 to 1 in favor of Mexico and ordered the United States to give Medellin another hearing, or perhaps another trial, at which he could receive the assistance of the Mexican consular employees. At that time, the World Court was headed by a judge from communist China. A 1963 treaty known as the Vienna Convention, which both the U.S. and Mexico signed and ratified, provides the, that aliens who are accused of crimes in foreign countries are entitled to request the assistance of consular officials from their home countries. Medellin never requested such assistance until long after he was tried, convicted, and sentenced, and after all his appeals were denied. Of course, Medellin did receive the assistance of the competent American legal defense lawyers throughout the process, which lasted longer than the lives of the girls that he murdered. There is no reason to think that the presence of a Mexican consul would have made any difference in the outcome. Incredibly, the Bush administration knuckled under to the World Court and ordered Texas courts to give Medellin another hearing. The Texas courts promptly refused to honor, this, <clears throat> to honor this unconstitutional presidential interference, and the Texas decision was upheld by the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. This case is dramatic proof as to why the U.S. Senate should not ratify any more U.N. treaties that put American law in the noose of foreign tribunals. The U.S. has only one vote out of about 150 nations, i.e. the same as Communist Cuba. Not only are foreign tribunals hostile to the United States, but their judges have no comprehension of American law, due process, or trial by jury. They often meet in secret, they arrogantly assert that they can define their own jurisdiction, and they, their decisions cannot be appealed. American sovereignty would be severely diminished if the Senate is so foolish as to ratify the pending lost treaty. Once we accept the validity and jurisdiction of the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, which is already functioning in Hamburg, Germany, we will be expected to submit to their anti-American decisions. The Bush administration is trying to claim that problems with the Law of the Sea have been fixed and that we can veto rulings that we don't like. Just compare. We rejected the jurisdiction of the World Court in the Medellin case, but that doesn't stop the World Court and President Bush from asking the U.S. Supreme Court to overrule Texas criminal law and accept the World Court's authority over U.S. domestic law. It's obvious that we cannot defend on President Bush or any future president to stand up for, the American, for American law against busybody foreigners who hate us. Bush made it clear in the case of Medellin versus Texas that he sides with the murderer and a globalist court against American law. Bush's legal advisor in the State Department, John Bellinger III, made a revealing speech on June the 6th in The Hague. He bragged that President Bush accepts the World Court's decision about the Medellin case, as well as about 51 other convicted Mexican, Mexican murderers from various United States, and is now trying to persuade the U.S. Supreme Court to accept it as well. Bellinger said that he has a staff of 151, 171 lawyers uh, every day who work to promote the development of international law as a fundamental element of our foreign policy. He also added, most importantly, that the Bush administration entered into 429 international agreements and treaties last year alone, and now advocates a priority list of over 35 treaty packages, including the law of the sea. 
This is outrageous that these, tr these kinds of treaties and international agreements are going on be virtually behind closed doors, and it's another case of why we hope that your bosses will all see why getting America into these international agreements are very much dangerous. We don't know how international courts will rule. We can look at the playbook in the Medellin case and see that they're going to come down most of the time against the United States in the interests of our sovereignty. Thank you. The Law of the Sea Treaty Briefing. Will U.S. sovereignty be lost? For more information, log on to heritage.org.